welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So I asked you guys earlier today about what type of video you want to see next, and the consensus seems to be that you want to see a video about decidable languages. So we're going to talk about an interesting problem here that turns out to be decidable. So this language is a LBA, and where LBA stands for Linear Bounded Automaton. So it's like a Turing machine, but it has one additional functionality in that if we have some input w1, w2, w3, up to wn, let's say, then we can't actually go past right after the end of the input. There's no infinite one-way tape here. You can only go to where the input actually is. If the input's bigger, then you have more space, but you can't go past where the input is. So because you can't shift where the input is, there are special markers on either side so that you know where you have hit the end of the input and whatnot. So why is this decidable? So if you think about the recognizer for ATM, so the, the recognizer for ATM, how was that proven? Well, what it did was simulate the Turing machine M on input W and accept if the machine accepts. So linear bounded automatons, other than the fact that the tape is restricted, they are still Turing machines. They can move right, move left, change values at each position. So the thing is, LBAs can run forever. So let's take a note here. LBAs can run forever. And why is that? So what could happen is, let's say that this is the tape here, and let's say W1's here, W2, W3, all the way to Wn. Well, what we could do is, let's say we start here, we look at W1, and let's say I want to be nice and I'm not going to change anything on the tape. Well, what I could do is I can just go oscillating back and forth between the first two positions, and I just keep doing that forever and ever. So an LBA can run forever, even though the tape is limited. So how is it that A sub LBA is decidable, whereas ATM is not decidable? So let's remember that this is not decidable. So what could we do here? Well, let's see. Notice that in our little picture right here that we oscillate back and forth. Well, let's say that we did this move. We moved right here and then we move back left. Well, we're still, and we didn't change anything. So the, the machine is in exactly the same configuration other than maybe the state is different. But if I go back and forth enough, at some point I must go back to the same state that I was in before because I'm doing this infinitely many times and, and there are only finitely many states. So for that reason, at some point we must repeat a configuration of the machine. So remember a configuration has the state, has the tape contents, and the tape head location. So wherever we're looking at on the tape. Well, let's see, well, how long do we need to run the machine for to guarantee that there is a repetition at some point? Well, let's see. We could either be looking at the first position, the second position, the third position, etc., all the way until the very last position. And there, there aren't any more other than, I guess, the two ends, but that won't actually be a huge issue here. There, there are only essentially end positions here because we can't allocate additional space. So the number of possibilities for the tape head location is n. If, there are, if the input's length is n. Well, let's see. What state could we be in? Well, we could potentially be in any possible state. Let's just say that there are a q of them. So I could be in any one of the possible states. Well, what about the tape contents? Well, it could be that in each of the positions, it can be any one of the possible tape symbols. Anything could be in any position in general. I might not need all possibilities, but we're handling all of them. Well, let's just say that there are G different uh, tape symbols that we can place. So tape symbols. 
Well, in each position, there could be one of G possible things in that position. Well, what are the possible numbers of tape contents that we could ever have? Well, it's G for the first position, and then G for the second position, times G for the third position. Each position is independent of all other positions. So this gives us G to the N possible tape contents. But we, in, for each of the tape contents, we could, we could be in any state and in any of the tape head locations. So the total number of configs that we could ever have in a LBA on an input of length n is q, the number of states, times g to the n times n. So let's just remind ourselves that this is the state, this is the location of the tape head, and these are the tape contents. Okay, so that's the number of possible configurations. But if we run this for one more step, so if we run the LBA for one more step than this, so one more transition, so that number plus one transitions, then what must happen? Well, there are only that many configurations and we just ran for one more transition. So that means that we have must repeated a configuration. So we must repeat a configuration. And that's purely from the pigeonhole principle. If there are 100 possible configs and we run for 101 transitions, we must see a configuration twice. And because an LBA is deterministic, just like a Turing machine, we will run forever because if we see the same configuration we were in, we're just going to do the same transitions every single time, and we can't allocate additional space, so we will run forever. So if we ran for that many transitions, we can detect that the LBA will run forever. So we can detect if the LBA will run forever. So how can we make a decider for A sub LBA on input MW? Because remember, we have to get an LBA and an input W. So let's just uh, clarify that here, where M is an LBA and W a string. Well, what we do is run M on W for at most and I'll explain why that's, in, why that's there in a second, for at most q times g to the n times n plus 1 transitions. Well, why do I have the minus equal here? Well, that's because the LBA could accept or reject the input um, in a shorter amount of time. So if the, the LBA accepts or rejects at this point, uh, rejects before this point. So it, it didn't take, um, so at this point we can guarantee it won't run forever, then uh, accept or reject as specified by the LBA. So if we didn't detect that it ran forever, then we'll just output whatever answer the LBA said. But if it, we have detected it'll run forever, which means it hasn't said accept or reject by this number of transitions, then that means that the, it, the machine will never accept the input because it'll just run forever. So otherwise, and to clarify here, the LBA will run forever we must uh, reject at that point. Because rejecting means that the LBA will not accept input W because we detected it will run forever. So that's what is quite amazing about this language in that it is decidable and ATM is not decidable. And purely because we restricted the input 
to at most a certain length and we can detect if the machine will run forever. And because ATM is not decidable, that is an indicator that we can't detect whether a Turing machine will run forever or not. So I hope you thought that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you learned something new. If you have any insight on why ATM is not decidable beyond this, that would be wonderful. If you have any other questions, send me them, leave a comment, and as always, uh, thanks for watching.